Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, time for the compression test. Uh, lots of people do compression tests differently. This is the way we do them. Uh, we've run the engine this morning for about a minute just to warm it up a little bit and get some oil around the engine most importantly. We need to lubricate this up, we're going to be cranking it quite a lot and we want the oil around the engine to start with. So good tip, give it a little run first. We only remove one spark plug at a time to do a compression test. The reason we do this is if you have a failure between two cylinders, the compression will just come out the spark plug holes and you won't notice the transfer of gas. So if you do one spark plug at a time, you'll get a much truer reading. It does, however, use a lot of battery. So get yourself plugged into a, a bigger battery with some nice leads, stick it on a battery charger, and you should be good to go. We've got Zach in the cab there with a little clock on his lap. Um, and that's so we can time how long we turn it over. Trying to count the cranks is a bit difficult. So if we're gonna crank it over for seven seconds at a time, and that's nice and easy to do, watch the clock go round, we'll get it nice and accurate. The reason we don't just crank it and crank it and crank it is because eventually it will get to a pressure, but it's not a true reading. If we crank it for seven seconds, and one gets to 150, one gets to 110, it, it's telling you in that seven second period, it's different. So it's much better to be more accurate. So we take one spark plug out, put the gauge in, and give it a go. That's almost exactly just under 10 bar, which is about 145 psi, which is pretty good. We do each test twice, so we'll reset that and try again. Yeah, just about 10 bar again, 145 psi-ish. Now we're gonna write that down uh, under cylinder number two, and then we'll go on and test the next one. So it's, it's pretty straightforward, guys. Um, easy test to do, and you're probably doing it to check to see whether you have a head gasket failure, worn rings, low compression. I would expect about 150 psi per cylinder. Uh, that's a lovely good compression for one of these engines obviously different engines diesel petrol the compressions are different i mean diesel engines are much higher compression um, so yeah just put the spark plug back in you don't need to do it very tight um, just tight enough it's only transfer of gas you want to see between the cylinders and then we'll do another compression Another good tip about having the battery on there is the engine will crank slightly faster maintaining the oil around the system which is very important when you're doing this. And also I think I forgot to mention you need to disconnect the ignition system and the fuel system because you don't want fuel going into the, into the chamber that's going to make it different and you don't want it, the ignition system on because you might, you know, give yourself a little shock, which is never fun. I mean, it's a, it's a fair amount of volts, over 11,000 volts, but a very small amount of amps. So although it hurts, unless you've got a pacemaker, you will be all right. Right, here we go. Next cylinder, this is cylinder four. There we go, first test on that. It's showing 125 psi, which is a bit lower. So what we'll do is we'll check our connections to make sure we're all plumbed in right on that compression tester, because that is obviously significantly lower than the last one. And then we'll do our second test on it again. And if that's the same, we'll move on to the next cylinder. If that test is different, then we'll do it again till we get two readings the same. Okay. 
again 125 so that's got a bit of low compression on that cylinder um, it's not too bad it's a bit more than I would like but we'll move along and see what the rest read and see how it goes but that's basically how you do a compression test um, if we notice a particularly high one on one or one gauge goes up to 150 really fast we know that two cylinders are creating the compression at once so we'll suspect the head gasket's blown between the bores which you won't notice with water or oil mixture because there's a very small piece of metal between the bores of the head gasket and that can blow through um, normally on V8s it goes between uh, cylinders 2 and 6 or for some reason most commonly 3 and 5 so we'll check those over but I won't bore you with the rest of the video of us doing it um, we'll show you the results at the end uh, thanks for watching cheers ok compression test is all done um, we had one low cylinder here which was down to 50 the rest were around about 130 and this one was a bit higher and this was a bit lower which makes sense because this one's being allowed to move faster and create a bit more compression because this one's low so the engine's in pretty good condition overall but we've got an issue here um, the customer did inform me that this poor little engine swallowed a bolt so we suspect it's gone through the cylinder uh, and done some damage but we will be stripping it down having a look checking everything over and fixing the problem Cheers guys!